Let's make an easy circular knit machine and crochet shrug that can be stylishly worn with just about anything. In this video, I'll be using Cozy Wool Tweed by Loops and Threads, which I got on clearance. As well, I'll be using my handy scissors, a G hook, and my darning needle. I also highly recommend having around some of these clip stitch markers. So get out your Addy King size machine. I'm using a 46 pin circular knitting machine. I'm going to begin by casting on and doing my first full rotation of casting on by weaving my waist yarn back and forth. Then I'm going to knit four to six rows just to create a stabilizer for my fabric that I'm going to create with my project yarn. First, once I've done the first row of casting on, I'll put my yarn into the yarn holder and knit my first four to six rows of waist yarn before putting the project yarn on. After the waist yarn, it's time for the project yarn. So I'll be using one strand of loops and threads. Now to calculate my measurements, I measured myself from below my elbow on one arm to below my elbow on the other arm with my, arm, uh, my arms outstretched like a T and, it ca and I came up with about 40 inches. So in order to create 40 inches of fabric, we need to knit about 200 rows with this yarn. I calculated this because for the gauge of this yarn, it creates about one inch of fabric whenever I knit five rows. So that equals about 200 rows. So basically you can adjust this measurement based on how long or short you want the sleeves of your shrug to be and how wide your back is. Feel free to download the accompanying PDF to get a overview of how to calculate your measurements as well as an outline of what the construction of the garment looks like. So now I'm going to knit my two tubes of 200 rows with the waist yarn at the beginning and end of each tube. Feel free to pause the video and I'll meet you when we have our two tubes. Well done! Now we have our two tubes with waist yarn at both ends. Now let's stretch out the yarn to get the full length and any kinks out. Now we're going to seam the ends shut so we can prepare to seam together the shoulder and the sleeve of the shrug. But before you complete seaming this ends shut, you want to drop the first stitch, so one stitch at the beginning and another stitch at the other halfway point, so the 23rd stitch, so you can undo that stitch all the way down to the other end of the tube we will use the looser yarn that is dropped to stitch the seam together for the sleeve. So we'll do this together, taking the seam, find the first stitch and count 22 stitches across. 22, insert your hook, I'm using a G hook, and then grab the skip the 23rd stitch and grab the 24th stitch, skipping that 23rd stitch, because you're gonna unravel it all the way down the tube, and pull the 24th stitch into the 22nd. And then with your normal seaming, you're going to pull each opposite side into the other side to seam together the ends. And I will meet you on the other side. When we reach the end, we're going to drop one last stitch. So we're going to pull that last end in and we've left one stitch so that we can drop it and unravel it all the way down the tube and use it as our seaming sides. Now you can go ahead and remove your waist yarn. Then you'll want to go ahead and find that dro those drop stitches 
and drop the first one and all the rest of them all the way down the tube. Now I must admit, the yarn that I picked this tweed is a little bit fuzzy, so it took a little while to get all of the stitches dropped all the way down the tube. So I will meet you on the other end. Note to self, if I want an easier time next time, I am going to use less fuzzy yarn, but this yarn is just so beautiful. And now I've dropped the stitch all the way down the tube and I'm gonna repeat this on the other side. And once you reach the end of this side of the tube, then seam together the other end and repeat this on the other tube. Now at this point, we have both tubes which measure about 40 inches wide, seamed the two tubes closed with the side stitches dropped all the way down the tube. Now if you're not caught up, just go ahead and pause the video, otherwise let's piece together our shrug using our drop stitches. Now if you recall, we're gonna piece together our shrug based on this diagram. And we'll work from right to left where we'll start with the sleeve and the shoulders, tacking those together first. While doing that, we'll be sure to leave an opening for the neck. Shoulders and the sleeves at the top are tacked and stitch marked, then we'll work on the bottom of the sleeve stitch marking. Go ahead and grab your stitch marker clips because you're going to need those and your measuring tape so that we can measure our neck and our sleeves out. Now I'll stretched out my tubes equal about 42 inches. So I'm going to leave about a 12 inch neck because I like the boat net look, boat neck look. And then I'm gonna measure about 15 inches for each sleeve. So from the edge of the cuff to the inside of my neckline will be about 15 inches. Go ahead and tack the cuff of the sleeve together where we're going to begin joining our stitches together. Since I'm leaving a 12 inch opening for my neck, I'm going to measure 15 inches for the top of each sleeve and mark a stitch marker there. Then I will do the same for the other side. So I'll tack the top of the cuff measure 15 inches from the edge of the cuff to the opening of the neckline and put another stitch marker. Now we'll check our boat neck neckline and it's 12 inches so that's perfect. The bottom of the sleeve will tack next and we don't have to tack that much of the bottom of the sleeve just I'm going to tack about eight and a half inches and leave the rest for the body opening so that I could fit both sweaters turtlenecks and maybe even put this over a jacket and the body opening of the shrug will be wide enough to do that so just eight and a half inches so again tack the cuff of the sleeve as well as where you're going to stop joining the two sides and do this for both sides. We'll start seaming the bottom side stitches of one of the sleeves working from right to left. Begin by move, removing the stitch marker and inserting your hook and grabbing the first two strands of yarn from the drop stitches. Then from the other side, grab two pieces of yarn from the drop stitches and pull it through the yarn that's already on your hook. Then returning to the side you started, grab two more pieces of yarn and pull it through. Then go to the alternating side, grab two more pieces of yarn and pull it through. You could put your finger behind the stitches so you can see them a little bit better. And continue this until you reach the stitch marker. Once you reach the stitch marker, you can remove it 
And now we're going to seam just one side of the drop stitches and leave the other side of the drop stitches so we can leave an opening for our body. So continue just on one side, grabbing two pieces of yarn and pulling it through the yarn that's on your hook until you reach the other stitch mar marker, which will mark the other side of the opening of the body. Then we're gonna seam shut the other bottom of the sleeve. Now we're approaching the end of the opening of the body on one side. So we're gonna complete this stitch and now we're gonna reach over to the other side and begin seaming together both sides again to create the closing on the bottom side of the sleeve. Continue seaming and I'll meet you at the cuff. Once we get to those last few stitches, you'll want to remove the stitch marker and pull in that last end. Now, if you recall, we only did one side of the body where we picked up those drop stitches. So now we're gonna want to return back to the last stitch at the bottom of the sleeve where we joined both bottom sides of the shrug. We want to insert our hook in the last joined stitch. And from here, pick up the next two pieces of yarn of the stitches that are dropped on the other two, which is on our left side. There we go. Pick up two and continue to pick up those drop stitches until we reach the other side of the body. Now you'll want to have some yarn ready in the same color as the project so when we reach the last drop stitch we can pick it up with the extra yarn and secure it by weaving the end into the project so that the drop stitches don't unravel. Once you've picked up all those drop stitches then you'll want to grab that extra piece of yarn and hook it onto your crochet hook and pull it through that last loop. Then take the ends and weave it into the project so it's very secure. Now repeat this seaming process on the top side of the shrug starting at the cuff, working across the arm to the opening of the neck, then working one side of the neck openings drop stitches, then going back and doing, doing the other side's drop stitches, just like we did on the bottom. So once again, working from the right cuff and towards the left or left to right, whichever you prefer, prefer we're going to grab two, two pieces of yarn from one side and pull it into the other, then go to the other side, grab two pieces of yarn and pull it into the other side. Do this until we get to the first stitch marker. Now once we reach the next stitch marker, we're going to do just like what we did at the bottom and we're going to hop over to just one side and pick up the drop stitches on one side. Then once we reach the other stitch marker, we're going to join again. Now we'll join the top of the other shoulder and sleeve and join until we get to the other cuff. Great, now we finish the cuff, grab your yarn so that we can secure in this last loop and weave in our ends to make sure that it doesn't unravel.
Now we'll go back and pick up those drop stitches on the other side of the neck. And just like the bottom, we work our way across. Pick the last stitch up with our yarn and weave in our ends. It looks fabulous! All we have that's left to do now is simply crochet our cuffs. Starting with our first cuff, choose a join that is the bottom part of the shrug. So not the shoulder, but where the body opening is. And insert your hook where the join is. Starting with a slip knot, put your slip knot onto the crochet hook and pull through. Then chain two. Then insert your hook into the next stitch, which will be in between each of the ribs. Yarn over, insert your hook in between the knit ribs, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook between the knit ribs, yarn over, pull through the rib, and then pull yarn over, pull through all three loops. One more time, yarn over, insert your hook in between the knit rib to make your half double crochet, yarn over, pull through the knit rib, yarn over and pull through all three stitches. Continue this all the way around the cuff. So yarn over, insert your hook in between the knit rib, pull through, yarn over, pull through, pull through all the loops. Yarn over, insert in between the knit ribs, yarn over, pull through the rib, pull yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Continue this until you reach all the way around the cuff. You want to end up with 45 half double crochets crocheted into the cuff of the sleeve because the stitch pattern is multiples of five. So I'll see you on the other side of this cuff. We are on the last half double crochet. So we're gonna join with the first half double crochet with a slip stitch, then chain two. The stitch pattern for the cuff is eight rows of three front post half double crochets, then two back post half double crochets around, then doing this all the way around and joining with a slip stitch when we get to the first stitch again. So once again, begin with a front post half double crochet. We're going to do three of these, so going around from the front to the back and then back to the front, yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over again and pull through all three loops. So once again, yarn over, front post half double crochet in through the front and then back to front. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then one more front post half double crochet, yarn over, pull through the stitch, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now we're going to do a back post half double crochet. So yarn over, go from back to front, then front to back. So you go around the post, then yarn over, pull through the stitch, then pull through all, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over, back post half double crochet again, so back to front, then front to back, yarn over, pull through the stitch, then yarn over, pull through all three stitches. So we'll repeat the, the front post half double crochet again for three stitches. So front post half double crochet, yarn over, pull through the stitch, yarn over, pull through all three stitches, another front post half double crochet, and then one more front post half double crochet and then two back post half double crochets and then we'll com complete this stitch pattern so three front post half double crochets two back post half double crochets until we complete all 45 stitches around the cuff
last back post double crochet for this row and now we're going to slip stitch join to the first front post half double crochet and then we'll begin the next row with a chain two one two now repeat the three front post half double crochets and then the two back post half double crochets all the way around for the next row until we reach eight rows and I'll meet you at the end of the eight rows. Now the eight rows don't include the starting half post double crochets so really for the cuff there are nine rows of crochet. Now at the end of your last eighth row of three front post half double crochets and two back post double crochets, we are going to join with the last front post half double crochet, and then we'll pull through our yarn and fasten off with our scissors. Great! Now we'll repeat this process on the other cuff. Once you've finished your second cuff and woven in all of your ends, then you are ready to rock your brand new shrug. Let's style it together, shall we?